You hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence. I'm Mike, and this, this is a package from Endless Pens that I ordered a little while ago, and uh, let's get in here because I wanna see uh, this pen that I got. I think I've got an ink as well. I, I don't remember, it was a little bit ago, and I feel like I ordered some ink because it was on sale, but like maybe I didn't. I don't know, it's gonna be a little surprise. So let's get in here. I do know what the pen is though. And it's the first of a particular brand. Get in here, all right. All right. All right, inside here, yep, two inks, cool. I did put those in my cart at the end of the day, nice. All right, let's get into the pen first because this ought to be a fun one. This is kind of for Audrey, but also kind of for me, because I really liked it. This is going to be our first Bennu pen, and this was developed in conjunction with our uh, our, our friend Eric Gamma, who uh, I've actually never met, but I've corresponded with him online, so I'm going to call him a friend. He's a good dude. This is Sunday by the Pool. Should be a medium nib here. Look at this long cartridge. Standard international cartridge in the long format. You don't see that very often. Bennu pens are often a little too on the glittery side for me. Uh, so I'm really picky about them. We've just been kind of waiting for the right one. Look at all this, wow. Product information and lifetime warranty. This is, this is quite long. All right, product care, avoid strong shocks. I mean, don't, don't smash it. Uh, don't scrub it with abrasive things. Don't burn it. Keep it away from kids. Only use fountain pen ink. Good. Store the pen with a writing point upright. Yeah, I never do this. Um, I find when I do, it will often like make my nib dry out, but that has been pretty common advice. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I was accordion that back up. We got a little bit of swarf down in here to cushion it. And then it's in this thing here. All right, this is called Sunday by the Pool in the Euphoria series. Oh, this is nice. This is actually, this is actually prettier than I thought it was gonna be. This is uh, based upon a picture that Eric has of some uh, mosaic tiling around this pool that he likes. And uh, yeah, it came out really nice. You get like the blues and such in there. You have this nice chunky glitter with uh, big uh, square chunks there. Up in here as well. This nice crystal clear area here by the waist, by the cap band. Unscrewing that, you also have it on the section. Pretty good step down from the barrel to the section, but we have threads here for the section to screw into the barrel, and then some very soft threads here. They're uh, they're pretty wise, like some big block threads, or as they're sometimes called Acme threads. You have a Schmidt nib here, which says medium. Perfectly nice. Yeah, nice long section, so you aren't gonna get your fingers on these, but even if you do, they're no big deal. You also avoid the step this way. I didn't realize how big the cap was, I guess, on this. Sometimes when you have a step here, you end up touching it on the step, and a lot of people don't like that, but this feels pretty darn good. I like the interplay here. Oh, wow, look at this side. I didn't even look at the bottom here. You can see the clear area here, and you get some of those white streaky bits in there. That's pretty darn cool. All right. Okay, we got silver hardware here on the clip. How's the clip? Oh yeah, very nice. Actually, this, um, yeah, this is a good clip. I, I like this, works very nicely. Does this unscrew? No, not easily anyway. Faceted cap, faceted barrel. That feels good. We have a Schmidt converter in here, totally normal stuff. Yep, very nice. All right, let's uh, test this nib on some paper real quick and see how it feels. I bet it's gonna feel fine. Schmidt nibs are usually yeah, feels perfectly cromulent. I haven't got a, I haven't figured out what ink I'm gonna put in here just yet, and this is kind of gonna be, I think, maybe Audrey's pen, sort of. So maybe she'll get to pick the ink color. Probably she'll just tell me to pick one, but you never know. The Schmidt nib units often will have this, uh, this brass collar here, which does show through the section, and it's the only not silver part on the pen. So I kind of wish it was silver, or that this is a little bit opaque if I'm being extremely picky, but it does keep you from having things like uh, collars split or anything like that. So, yep, pretty cool. Stick that back in there, screw it back in. It's very easy to remove and uh, reset the nibs. Here, you just unscrew it. I like to cradle it here in the sort of crook of my finger and then put my thumb flat on the back of the feed and this kind of turn gently until it turns. I like to turn the section and just hold this still so I'm not twisting the nib in the housing. Just a little tip about changing nibs out. There you go. Let's put this back on. I kind of never realized how big the cap was. 
This is a pretty large pen. What can I show you uh, this next to? Well, here is a Pilot Custom 743. So it's essentially the same dimensions as a 743, which is way bigger than I kind of had these in my head. But like I said, it's my first one. So how is it uncapped? It's longer than the 743 when it's uncapped. Really interesting. I didn't see that coming. So this is the same size as the Pilot 823. Uh, so yeah, good sized pen there. How about that? What else do we have here? Uh, this is the new Esterbrook J next to it. Quite a bit shorter. Uh, we have here the Diplomat Arrow. Always one of my favorites, same length as the J. So yeah, this Binu is a large pen, much larger than I anticipated. Whoops, dropped my arrow. Good thing it's made of steel and I'm not gonna hurt it. So there you go, there's the, the Bennu Euphoria Sunday by the pool, Sunday like the ice cream, right? Cool stuff. All right, let's uh, check out these inks here. Uh, deploy the mighty bench made to get through the tape quickly. All right, so a pair of Shikiori inks. These are two that I didn't have, and they were on, I think, double sale over there at uh, Endless Pens. So we have here Tama Tobacco and Kazakiri Bane, maybe? I think. These are from the Japanese fairy tale sections. Uh, Forbidden Treasure Chest is. Oh, well, actually, hmm. Interestingly, here on this, it doesn't tell me which is which, so maybe it'll say on the bottle because it doesn't have the Japanese on here, so I'll have to do some translating, but not a big deal. So let's get in here. Actually, on here, there is no English for the name. I assume it's what's uh, up above here, but no English for the name on there, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. All right, well, I'm going to have to... Put a little, I'll put a little dot on the top of this or on the box or something just to tell me what it, oh, what's this? Here we go. Yeah, yeah, I can put this on the bottle, I guess. This right here. Still doesn't say what the English is, so the invoice and in that won't match. And then we next have this one. Oh, maybe I should keep these, maybe I should keep these together because there's no English on here, okay. We'll do it this way. Okay, let's uh, do a little quick swatching. Y'all are gonna watch it in super spread, sped up mode. Okay, pretty darn dry here. There's still a little bit of wetness going on over here, but I looked these up in the meantime, and uh, Tama Tebako stands for Jeweled Handbox, which is a treasure box given to Urashima Taro from the Princess of the Dragon Palace. The subdued navy reminds people of the fantasy Urashima Taro experienced underwater. Interesting. I don't know if I would call that a subdued navy. I mean, you can tell it's a navy blue right over here on the corner, but... There is such a lot of sheen here from the swatch. It might not, uh, it might be more navy from a pen. I don't know. And then we have here uh, Kazakiri Bane, which it says embodies the tale Crane's Return of a Favor and symbolizes the feather color of the departing crane on a winter day. Now that is some poetry right there. That is an extremely dark kind of, I'm going to say it's a purple, but it is just barely purpley back in here, kind of plum purple, but very dark. I'm gonna have to see these out of a pen, I think, to make sure to see what colors they really are, because I think the swatch, either these are just very dark, and they are pretty dark, I mean, you see there on the label, they are meant to be, but very, very dark inks, kind of remind me a bit of the, um, the Yurimiku number two series there with the uh, super dark colors of the heart and spirit. So yeah, interesting stuff. Very cool colors there. Dark, broody, and then this extremely bright and happy Bennu. So that's a fun little juxtaposition and I like it. So there you go. This is stuff that I bought from Endless Pens. So thank you very much to my patrons for helping me to, uh, you know, drop money on things like this so I can show it to you and test it out for you and all that sort of jazz. Uh, so thank you for very much for being patrons if you are and if you're not thanks for watching and uh, tell a friend until next time peace out